Hello there. Welcome along to another edition of Talking Through Your Kick on this uh, Monday. And the team has assembled yet again, battered and bruised. Although, a little mini fight back from the punters uh, on the weekend, Neil Evans from Luxpet. Hello, Russell. How are you? How was uh, Winton, mate? Benalla. Oh, quick trip down there. But, <laughs> yes, I know that was very interesting. Did the punters but love you there? Oh, I don't know about love me, but uh, anyway, no, that went OK. Uh, the punting uh, sand down, I thought I was on for a big day when Maydung flew out of the blocks, but yep. it was hard whacking away after that, sort of around the mark. But very, very good betting day, I've got to say. A lot of firmers, very good competitive racing. Track played good. And we're going to look uh, closer into that a little later in the show and, of course, heading into the WA Carnival, which is yes. your uh, home love territory, it. of course. Love it. Uh, the Maltese Marauder starting to look very weary after a long campaign. Yeah, no, uh, good evening, Russ. Good evening. Evening, everyone. Happy to be back in Sydney. It was good to be out at uh, Rose Hill last Saturday. Uh, Girls' Day out. Well done to the Australian Turf Club for getting close to 14,000 people yeah. to the races uh, for a meeting that didn't have any stars on the track and everyone looked to be there enjoying themselves. Uh, punting wise, it wasn't a bad day. I found Sacred Star early, Bay Window, something there, and then uh, dived into Queen Inn in the last. It would have been a nice result, but. Uh, can't uh, have everything go your own way. Exactly. And a new panel member. Uh, last week we had a bloke with big hair. Now we've got a bloke with no hair. What's <laughs> doing there, Nicholas? i tell you what's doing. I don't think it's any coincidence that Brent's first day back in Sydney on a Saturday was Girls' Day Out. Oh, yes. boys, it's enough of that. So, uh, mate, you've gone with new <laughs> hair but uh, for some reason kept the old tie. What's going on? No, nah, it's all right. <laughs> we're just going to take small steps. But uh, no, the, all for a good cause and the hair's gone. But don't worry, it'll be back thicker and greyer than ever. And well done <laughs> on that moustache from November, mate. That looks magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the 20th and you've uh, got nothing to show for it. Mm. Uh, rap or slap time, uh, Brent stole my thunder a tad. I reckon it's a great idea. Any reason to get the boys and girls out on a, uh, a day after Carnival Day is worthy of a rap. So the ATC, the girls' day out, it's uh, been going along for a few years now. It's got some traction. Believe it or not, mm. second biggest crowd. It's only 14,000, but that's going to change. But I think maybe there's a girls' day out now that could happen at Randwick as well. Just to say, look, you can have one at yeah. Rose Hill. You can have one at Randwick. Maybe one at the farm one day, but uh, it's a good concept and yep. it should be almost uh, taken all around the country. All for promotions. Uh, they need to do it. I remember the pink one they had at Randwick was a massive the, day. The, the university was. day that they have in Brisbane goes, it's a Wednesday. Yeah, and it they get about 14,000, 15,000. Yeah, it's a mm. massive day as well. I agree. Uh, you, rap or slap? Well, I was going to slap Nick for the new hat, but you, you told me to grow up and yep. behave myself. So I'll do that. I'm going to wrap Sandown because uh, I think it's one of the best betting tracks in Australia. We saw horses come up the fence and win. We saw horses in front. We saw Mayasara dash away on the turn. Didn't say any mine from the win. back. Didn't see any of yours win, Russ. But I think it played very true, which is what you want on a competitive race where there's wide markets, good betting, and uh, I'm always quite critical of tracks, particularly around other Melbourne venues, but Sandown was tip-top. You were pretty critical of Winton a bit earlier on, but oh, let's move on. Will you leave Winton alone? <laughs> uh, Brenny Boy, rap or slap? I'm giving a rap to Gwenda Markwell, speaking through my uh, kick. Good uh, on Talking you. through your kick there. Uh, with Bay Window, I think she does a marvellous job with these older horses. Hadn't won for a long time, but still keeping it... Um, fresh enough and keeping its mind on the job to get yeah, it Yeah, there was a couple of horses, though, that uh, might go into the forgettable file. We'll talk about them later from Rose Hill. And uh, rap or slap, Nicholas, uh, we've actually taken the liberty to give you uh, your own title on this one. Have a look at this and you'll understand why. <laughs> my, my Seriously. Father. I wanted to give a, uh, a slap to Brent Zarafa, but you told me I wasn't allowed to do that either. Why would you want to slap him? He forgot, he, to, he forgot to tell me about our Greyhound running Saturday night and got the chocolates okay. at $18.70. At, at Richmond, I want to have a little bit of a panel discussion here. Is it my, my obligation to tell him that a dog we are in is running, or should he just know? He should know. You should have it, the black Hang booker, on. When Brent you? said... Look at put in the black book. I said, Brent, I don't want to talk about black books with you. Let's just stick to racing. Hunter's Paradise black oh. book. Just go in there and I it can't reminds believe you. you didn't know, but no, eighteen dollars I mean, didn't have a bean on though. Syndicate manager can't didn't even send a text to I the boys. Sat, I was out there at Richmond, went all the way out, oh, sat and watched it in the grandstand. Oh, did and, you? Yeah, and uh, the big tip on track was the six dog was just a flying machine. So I sat back and watched. It was six in front. Broke down on the turn. Oh. Got up. Oh, okay. Got up on the Jeez. inside. Did a bit of a Bradbury. Got the cash. Eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars. Yeah. Nine ninety. The place. Not oh. the funniest story to happen on a weekend. We'll uh, go through that a little later on. But let's have a quick look at uh, what happened on the weekend from a punting perspective. And whilst the Williams team continued to shine, it was at the expense of those of us who might have charged into the declared Moraine because I know they love this race. Not oh, I. Oh please, Moraine. 
Our, the only true weight for age performer in the race was trekking and gone in the same breath. Interesting here, Russell. Uh, the horse didn't run. Tamby missed the Melbourne Cup. Maybe that had something to do with the boys. The horse is backing didn't, up. Maybe found it a bit tough. Uh, no. no, but it just didn't go there. Didn't go there. Fresh, fresh legs compared, fresh legs, compared yeah. to yeah. Passant Stallone on the final day. It finished third behind Passant Stallone and Einstein. Well, and it's this, a long cut place in Melbourne Cup Dunedin story. As well, so. This horse is coming out of the, uh, of the Cup. What a 10-day break. I'm not giving up on Rornak. It'll be one for the autumn because I thought it tried to get out three times to get to Galloping yeah, Room. Didn't a, do it. Not a keen of three-year-olds against weight for age horses at the mm. back end of the carnival there. Yeah, like, yeah, it it was an average derby, I thought. Um, yeah. Like the, the, yeah. the results out of it. I, I Moran heavily backed. Yeah. Uh, Tanby a little bit of a nibble. Rornak was backed early. Yes. Um, mm. uh, overall, punters got being, it wrong. Got it wrong. Got it wrong. Definitely. I think the the two best backed runners for the race were Moran um, and the three year old in British potting yeah. the potting the derby form. And I think Tanby sort of did slip under the the guard of most punters. And there was specking for exceptionally late, and you can just see exceptionally doesn't again. Yeah, I was going to say, doesn't off. it just love running just second? Flashing home and just being a tragedy beaten. There were a lot of people very critical on Twitter of Dean Yendall's ride. What did you think of that? Oh, well, I thought he got uh, mm. pants pulled down by Nick Hall at the 300 there because he went past him and had to come out again. Yeah, but she's that side of horse. She yeah. races off the pace, needs a lot of luck. Did oh. uh, Nick Hall get fined for uh, forgetting where the winning post was there? He had to get back <laughs> down on his, uh, on his bike there. With 50 to go, he forgot about uh, the horse running yeah, down the outside. Yeah, he's just lucky that the uh, exceptionally didn't get closer because uh, he could have been in a little bit of strife yeah. if he sat up there, but he got the job done. OK, uh, let's get stuck into the emails. TTYK at tvn.com.au. Uh, Lou writes, yes, I'm talking through my kick, but that's what the show's all about. How often does it happen where a stable mate beats the favourite runner? Yes, I thought Moraine was immoral, but it seems to occur quite often. And this goes back to the, the Waller days. It happens yes. a lot mm. with Waller. Happened again on Saturday with Waller, didn't it? Sacred star. Yeah, but like... At, but like he, he I've, picked I've that one at the start of the race, I've, the pre-race. I've, I've said um, on here before, we only notice it when the outsider beats the favourite. When mm. They might be two, they could have been two in the race if Moraine won. No one would have even said anything about, oh, the, you know, the, the favourite runner beat the, the outsider. It only gets highlighted yeah. when the outsider, but it's a bad feeling. Don't, oh, I hate it, it myself. Is, yeah. Like, yeah, it happens a lot, but that's the sort of race that could have been run a few times with different... And so it looks like not... Chris Waller's going to move into some of the Patnak uh, stables from what we can read uh, on hoping. the websites mm. because uh, it seems that he wants to go down and set up a satellite stable to avoid having his horses run in the same race, which I think is kudos to Chris Waller. Yeah, it yeah. certainly is, and trying to grow his business, which is what it's all about. Peter Moody's done it um, in Sydney. He's got boxes at Rose Hill, and it's taken a bit of time, but he's starting to get the results now with uh, week in, week out. OK, let's have a look at this email. Uh, Team Williams has shown that the more patient you are with stayers, the greater of the rewards. They're finally sending the benefits of not rushing their young progeny or their imported horses. Notice how I'm reading this so much better this week than I was uh, in the bars. Exactly, Russell. Um, <coughs> Williams' horses getting pushed into being ready as a two-year-old all for a gruelling derby at three. They wait until they're matured. Blah, blah. Brandon. They like to give them time. They like the long straights, don't they, boys? They seem to be plenty of galloping room. They've got the, uh, they've got the patience mm. and the ability to buy a horse, put it away, mm. get it right and when it's ready. There's no pressure yeah. on there's no pressure from owners or you mm. know syndicates or anything like that wanting to get a quick return for their money, which is a big part of what. That's a very good racing. point. So that they, they've got the point. ability to do it, uh, and it works the system for them. And as a sort of subplot to that, he also gives other trainers the chance. If he doesn't want them, he says, "Look, they're okay, yep. but here you go. You can have this horse because." Uh, I just don't think I can win the Melbourne Cup with it. Yeah, and that, that's a very good point Brent makes. Nick, about, you know, we talk about the difference New South Wales, Victoria, the obsession up here with the, you know, the sprint mile as opposed to patience for stayers down in Victoria. But, yeah, well, exactly. But the fact that they're fantastic for racing because, as you touched on, there's a lot of people that own ex-Lloyd Williams horses and it's the best horse they're ever going to own and they get it on the cheap because they're not Group 1 horses. Um, if you had a dollar on the Williams team, uh, Quinny, through the entire carnival, I mean, Green Moon, obviously, the Melbourne Cup, and uh, he won the Underwood, Turnbull, which one was Turnbull, it? Turnbull, wasn't it? Turnbull. Um, yeah. Faulkner won a couple. Mm. Uh, who else won? Tamby, yeah, obviously. Yeah, Moraine yeah. won the Craven Plate. Excluded a couple early on. There Excluded. you go. Uh, with probably a couple of provincial You'd have to winners. Be in front. Oh, absolutely, you'd yeah. be in front. You'd be in front. It helps with a $20 winner, SP Cup Day. Yeah, <laughs> that'd get you rolling. Let's get roll. Back, get get back 19, Hash, hashtag let's get roll. Get back 19 losers and you'd still be in front. We have to roll uh, this Saturday, don't trust you Trust me, I had the 19 losers covered. Uh, <laughs> another team that went really well and uh, 
uh, Darley team have uh, really clicked in the last couple of weeks, particularly their jockey, Kieran McAvoy, uh, and he got the kudos on Saturday afternoon with a couple of gun rides. No better than uh, May Dung, which... Abs uh, sorry, this is Tatcha we'll look Tatra. at first. Yeah. Um, I thought Three it was going to get swamped. Huey got a little bit... Um, Happy with himself. Yeah, I, I think um, a lot button. of credit here must go to Peter Snowden and his staff for keeping this horse Tatra up. Yeah, Even go. Proverb, because they were racing at the start of the Sydney Spring Carnival. Like, Come on, uh, Lunar Rise. Sort I thought of August, September. Everywhere. Still now punching at the end of um, mm. uh, end of mid-November. That's a big effort from uh, for both these horses. Um, I think it certainly does. Yeah. Lunar Rise yeah. is the same. It was in a maiden at Hawkesbury. I uh, fell into it there um, and ran into a horse called Prazir, who was on debut, um, and it's come out and gone right to the end of the carnival. So also well done, good training performance. And they've done it at the start with the Golden Rose running the Quinella here, and Peter Snowden said he identified these two as not quite the cream of the crop for the three-year-olds, so mm. they targeted this race, and as you can see, they've got it right again. Their placing this spring carnival has been absolutely well, sensational. Well, I said it weeks ago, switching Sydney to Melbourne for these horses. They place them well when they take them to Melbourne. Unfortunately, I was on Proverb, the other one, that I'm getting to be excited about. But uh, just place them well when they when they change state. What was the Robbie Griffiths uh, horse running? Uh, uh, ran into a few dead ends running And okay. it missed the kick by oh, yeah. five. Yeah. It was yeah. huge. It, was, it is one to watch. That was a reasonable run. Awesome run. They just forward. spotted yep. that, of course, uh, three yep. days later than everybody else. Um, <laughs> Karen McAvoy, I mentioned May Dung. You <laughs> take us through this. Oh, yeah, this was good. There he is I can't at the imagine, back. I can imagine a lot of punters were scratching their heads about here thinking, oh, what's going on, oh, yeah. what's going on? But <laughs> it helps. Is he pushing through or coming out? It helps when you're on a filly that's obviously got a lot of ability and a big long straight there at Sandown. And once she saw daylight... Yeah. It was, uh, but it didn't look like it was going to pick him up there. Then all of a sudden, here yeah, the class go. really starts to rise and get to the. You're still, you're still 100 metres out there. You're still a long way to go, yeah, and yeah, then she sits up quite. Uh, yeah, but it's all over. She, the place. But she, she's been going well, and that form for that straight course run at Flemington oh, is going to be go, is going to be good. You yeah. go prior to that, her, her Sydney form. She was running behind a cheetah. She runs Sydney. Exactly. That's that's the best three on Philly. That was so a race. Form uh, that was 20, a race. Punters now, uh, we've given Kieran McAvoy raps, slaps and everything in between, but is he now the punter's friend at the moment? Obviously, Craig Williams might be getting the nod, but has he been the most consistent jockey throughout the carnival? Well, absolutely, and the fact that Daly's been so dominant, the Snowden team has done such a great job, and Kieran's ridden most of them, but he just still doesn't seem to get the respect he deserves, so you're probably still going to be able to keep backing him and keep making money. Your turn. Oh, my turn. Yeah, well, you're. I just thought you all yeah. agreed with me so much. Oh, you no, all went no. silent. Well, um, what you see is what you get. I, I, I wasn't a great McAvoy fan, um, no, but I, he, he's he's had a terrific month, and his timing has been terrific, and he's been you know in the in confidence. the box seat. He's come from the back. Dumb timing question. Has been great. He's riding brilliantly. Of all the things that are I'm coming, I take of, it on face value. Russ. Okay, so all of the things that are coming out of Daly at the moment, he's probably one of the best. Is there a chance for him to be? Exported again by the Sheikh, or doesn't he want to borrow it no, again? That's why that's he's here. He would have had the opportunity to yeah. stay over there he if he wanted. No, no his family got a young family and wants to yeah. be in, in Sydney, and that's why he's that was his uh, wish to come back okay. to Australia. Right? Um, what about this for an email? And I'll give it to you, uh, uh, Neil, because you're from Luxpet. Um, yeah. May Dung was backed on the Queensland Tote on Saturday, naturally pleased as she swooped. But I got the shock of my life when the divs flashed up with a two dollar thirty price. Mm -hmm. um, I swear it was comparable with the fixed price when I put it on. Perhaps even better. It was three fifty into three twenty, I believe, or fixed. something. Yeah. Fixed. Yeah. Well, four dollars into three fifty. Yeah, it was four to three. SP three fifty, yeah. and you get two thirty. Uh, I don't know, understand how it can change that drastically from basically <coughs> jump time till the end of the race. Well, that, that was in the Queensland tote, you say. It was two fifty, two sixty, two thirty. All the totes got crunched, which, got crunched crunch which is a big indication that the pros yeah. and the big punters have just jammed in on the totes. 100%. All the money comes in the pool late, yep. and that's what happens because they, you know, they might be able to get on with all the. I tell you what, I mean, certainly a, four dollars. They're, they're bet up at three eighty, and it was a firmer. So that's the old story about. Well, you take Lux, you know, Steve, you well, get 350 Yeah, still. look, we can exactly. easily segue Best into a free four. plug, but the bottom line is you do get, with the, the corporates especially, yeah, you're Lux, Steve, best of four. Best of four. Yeah. So the which bloke, is a great way to bet. Yeah. If, you, if you're undecided on oh, which way is the market going to go, which one they're going to back, it's not a bad insurance. But it's not a great advert for some of the totes if they get smashed late because there's happen, no way of indicating. Yeah, but it can happen. There, there, can but happen. The, uh, the flip side to it is if, if she gets beat, you're going to get an inflated price on the horse that runs second because mm. it's all supply Relative. and demand. Yeah, so mm. it's and the thing exactly. is, they're going to take each case on its own. It's, it's they sort of all hard to single out one. Talk or the other. about what the price when it goes over the line, but nobody goes back and says, "Oh, you know, if that 
actually got beat, you know, we got six dollars the second, no, exactly. not four dollars. Exactly, it was the same as with our dog at Richmond. I was looking at eight dollars a minute before they jumped, and then it goes past the price. Oh, wasn't I didn't know it was running. <laughs> Mate, what price was the bookmaker out there? Four dollars. Do- four dollars no, the field. Eight dollars. I'm not going to bag him, Brian Rollins. He's not a bad boy. He's been out there for a hundred years. Dollar seventy goods. He's South support. Last winner I backed. Um, here's another email as we continue to reflect on the uh, the tragedies of our lives. The amount of oh, here we go. The amount of Sydney trained horses winning in Melbourne this spring has been unbelievable. Since Caulfield Cup Day, writes one of the calendars, there have been more than 20 races won by Sydney trained horses. No, not uh, by Ray Thomas, I beg your pardon. Uh, including the four days of Flemington plus Cox Plate Day and Sandown on Saturday. Late. Next page. <laughs> Naturally, Melbourne trained gallopers have won a few too, but this seems like an unusually high amount. Any thoughts as to why, Cam? Uh, it's not an unusually high amount. Sydney horses have been dominant down in Melbourne f- over the carnival for several years. But let's oh, keep I in mind... Uh, Sydney, Melbourne... No, no. Argument. Well, he's brought up the email. I mean, let's keep in mind there's no black caviar, there's no Atlantic Jewel, there was no Managar, so a lot of the cream of the best went out the door for Melbourne. So, um, But if you look at the numbers, boys, it's probably just average for Sydney and Melbourne because I can remember a few other carnivals, Nick, just cut a sway. I just remember all these Sydney champions it. coming down and getting beaten Who, once again this year. Who's that? Oh, Piero for one. Oh. Okay. How's that Piero. more joyous? Just Shall quiet. I continue? Yeah, but you know, argument more joyous. Just than quietly, me, so Piero gets beat but, by All Too Hard. What is All Too Hard? Is he Sydney or Melbourne? All Too Hard yeah. is, Sydney is Sydney a Sydney horse. He's a Melbourne horse. He's a He's Melbourne horse. He's trained by a Sydney where trainer. Is he He's trained out at Flemington with Wayne Hawks looking after him. He won four He's races in Melbourne, didn't win a donut in Sydney. He's a Hawks horse. Where, yeah. does, where does he, where does he start his campaign? Where does he start? Where does he break his campaign? Where does he trial and everything like that? I'm just I threw like the question out there. Wherever he's racing. This argument Turn about up. where they're from, it's got to be the headquarters of the stable. Well, wait till you start trying to claim all the Peter Moody ones when he starts dominating up in Sydney. Quinny. Next, move on. When will that be? So you... Uh, <laughs> told you I hate this argument. Uh, anyway. If you want to get involved in our show, uh, you haven't got much time. Uh, <laughs> www.punnersparadise.com.au, the world's best racing website. 300,000 people on Melbourne Cup Day, which is more than any other website racing wise in Australia. And they've actually bought another couple of websites, including rleague.com. Watch out for some new initiatives over the next few months. And Quinny, here's one for you, including full UK form. Absolutely. For York and what about Val? Val South Africa? That's to you come. love Val. Val's to come. T-T-Y-K at tvn.com and at our Twitter address, which is at tvn.tty.k.